this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic Podcast, Season 2, Episode 2. And we got Coach Mark uh, Poston on. Did I say that right, Mark? Poston? Poston, yeah. yeah. Mark Poston. Uh, he's going to be talking about high school football game plan organization, but we're allowed to be talking about anything. Thank you to our sponsors. Reps, Virtual Reality, First Down Playbook, Rack Coach, Top Hopper, Sideline Design, Sports Workbook, and Tip of the Spear. We have a special co-host today, and that's uh, Harry Lees. Harry just met me a few days ago. So, Harry, uh, just tell us a little bit about how you found the Championship Football Coaches Clinic and how did you end up on here today? Well, it sounds like, Troy, first of all, I appreciate you having me on, but – you know, it sounds like I'm a lot like you. I'm a football junkie. I am, and uh, just looking around trying to find the next podcast because I've listened to everything and, and, and watched everything. And I found one of your videos and uh, on on a on a guy that I was uh, you know interested in listening to. And then and then I found out, hey, this is this guy's got a lot of stuff out here. And and I started and 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 I was you you've done so, some really really good interviews. And, and, and including Coach Post, and, and so finally I just had to reach out to you. Said, brother, you, you're doing a great job. And not awesome. only not only the football stuff, but we talked about it earlier. I mean, the history, the history of the game that that could easily be lost if if things like this aren't aren't out there where where people can just just click on now because uh, you know the, the the old coaches, you know that like us all, they're all going to go away one day and. But right. their stories now they can remain, you know, forever because you've done a good job and reached out. Bro, you don't mind reaching out to anybody because you have got you've got some big dogs. And uh, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just a fly on the wall, just happy to be here. I promise you. Oh, this guy that we're listening to today, he's he is uh he's one of my favorite guys to listen to. So uh anyway, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man, I've I've been to Divorce City. I got we got fired twice at Virginia Union, and hey, I just got uh, I I just went to Lit Go City, and the only thing left is Gene Steratore making another video saying that I am the all time most penalized coach again on any level for the second year in a row, Coach. I almost <laughs> had that. Have you seen that yet, Harry? No, I just take it now. I, oh, that's I will that re- happened. That's legit. <laughs> I will repost it. OK, because the referees tried to get me fired and they did. Uh, so all y'all, thank you. Thank you for doing that. And, uh, you know, Mark, he asked me, he said, man, Troy, you should get Mark on every week. And I was like, well, just come on with us. So, Mark, that's right. What do you, what are you thinking about right now about today? Uh, me? Um uh, number one, I'm open to talk about anything what you guys want to talk about. Uh, two, uh, something that I'm real passionate about is uh, uh, game plan and practice plan organization and just not wasting any reps. But how do you mathematically count what, how many reps you're going to be able to get during the week, during the course of a season? Uh, because that's going to determine how much offense you're going to be able to carry. Um, and so, you know, uh, anything like, I mean, we talk X's and O's too, uh, whatever. I mean, I'm just, you know, whatever you guys want to talk about where I'll be glad to share what little I know with you. Um, I miss the game. Uh, you know, I did it for a long time and I miss it and who knows, I might get back into it. You never say never. you like Michael Corleone. You never say that's right. <laughs> Every time I'm up, they pull me back, back. in. <laughs> That's right, man. So y- you did uh, a big write-up, Mark. You want to post that, and, and we'll go through that. And if Harry has any questions, sure. shoot. If anybody sure. else has any questions, watching, just po- post it in the comments on YouTube. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put it up here. Okay, you going to put it up? Yep. Yep. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I, I had a phone call there. That's but uh, so this is just some. Random thoughts that I decided to get down, uh, uh, you know, and and I, I do that. I, I made one for a quarterback as well several years ago. But just some things that I thought were really important to me and, and young guys who decided they wanted to make a living uh, throwing the football. 
And, uh, and so you can see it's got a number of bullet points there. Uh, I, I, you know, I can go through each one or I can, you know, however you guys want to do it. Uh, the biggest, one of the biggest things is, is that you can't dabble in it. You, 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 you have to, you got to marry it. Okay. Marcus uh, Mayo. There he win, is. Win the now. There it I is. Be on that lawsuit against University of Georgia. That they use your trademark. That is the guy right there. You got another shooter here, Marcus. Harry <laughs> is a shooter, a Mouse Davis guy. Love it. Love it. Um, so there it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I think that everybody, you know, should try to read at least one passing article a day to build your overall framework of knowledge. Uh, you know, and it's going to cost you money. You know, but you need to get the AFCA manuals. You need to get the Nike manuals, you know, all, all the stuff from Earl Browning uh, to build your knowledge. OK, uh, like you, Troy, don't be afraid to email, write letters, watch YouTube. A lot of the old um, uh, USA coaching clinic videos that we used to have to pay thirty nine ninety five a piece for. Uh, they're on YouTube now for free. Um, uh and the biggest thing that I see with a lot of coaches who are traditionally run oriented is they don't give it enough reps in practice because they don't really trust it. And then they want to hit the rip cord when it doesn't give great results. So don't hit the rip cord too early. Okay. It's, it's expensive early. Okay. Uh, and I don't care what passing off that you're talking about, the shoe, West coast, whatever. Uh, but they're cheaper later on. Hey, they're Sid. Yep. Father of the modern day passing game. And there's my man right there. Yes, sir. Gibby. Yep. You got them all. I'm a junkie. You gotta get a, you gotta get a mouse or a June in there, dude. Co Coach Mountjoy, he wouldn't like that. <laughs> Why does Coach Mountjoy? Not like the run and shoot is because he doesn't like five man protection and route conversions, right? Five man, um, you know, uh, there, there's a lot to be said for that, and that's something that you got to go over extensively, um, if you want to keep your quarterback upright. But every every offense, unless you're literally going to turn around and just hand the football off, and even with that, okay, your tailback's going to get hit 35 times, okay. Um, so the biggest thing too, is the players have to understand that it's the only way that they can win. And that's not coaches speak. This is what I've told our teams. Like, look, this is not a way to win. It's the only way we can win. So we're burning our ships and this is what we're going to do. And we're going to be different. And when I took over at Rockbridge, and, and, and I was blessed to have an unbelievable staff who were all really good kids or good young coaches. I said, we're going to lead the state of Virginia in AAA and pass it. And we did. And um, it's a commitment to the system, and it's a commitment and, and, and tribute to the players. Um, but, but you better know what you're doing because you're going to see it all, dude. You're going to see everything in the world. You're going to see blitz, three high, uh, quarters, uh, and, and you're going to have to go to work. Um, um, the big thing, too, uh, and I got this from John Jenkins, is you need to have wide receiver drills, whether in pre-practice or during your indie time, that wide receivers are catching multiple balls per drill, okay? And that's the multiplier effect, all right? Have, have drills where they're catching multiple balls per drill. Um, when, uh, Mike Grow was at Alabama, we went down to Alabama, uh, and in the spring. Yeah. And they had a lot of different drills with cones where, you know, they did one was a box drill where he's going to catch five, drop it, go for five more, drop it, then break to the post and throw the post. Well, that guy just got three balls. Okay. Um, you could put them on the five on, on the yard lines going across. And, and I'm going to stand up and show you this one, okay? I don't know if you can see it. 
I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna take away your your thing here so we so, can see you. So here's the field. Okay. So you put a player here, a player here, a player coach here, player coach here. All right. And so you got your line of players. Can you guys see that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So these guys have got a ball one, two, three, four, five. So he takes off running. He's catching the football. When he catches it, he drops it. Now he's going to catch this one. Now he's going to catch this one. Now he's going to catch this one. Now he's going to catch that one. And it starts on that one. That guy's just caught five balls. Okay. And so you do drills like that where they catch multiple balls. And like the stair step drill, I was telling you, let's see. you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here, and you put one at the post. You go coach, uh, coach, and then uh, you put a coach here. Player, 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 player. I'm going to hit the five yard out, bang it here. As soon as I catch it, I drop it. You hit the five yard out, boom. Now I'm stepping to the post, and the coach throws me the football on the post. He just he just caught three balls. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now do that over the course of spring and summer. And always we always use tennis balls too. Okay. If you have an issue with guys dropping the football, throw tennis balls at them. Okay. Have them, have them, have them uh, catch tennis balls. Okay. Tighten that noose. Uh uh. The, the one where it says, uh, you must educate your coaches and your players about the passing game. Assume they know nothing, okay? And, I mean, if you're supposed to be going to bring in a new guy on the staff or whatever, you you got to teach them, okay? Uh, and the biggest thing that I've seen, and I, and I watch games on NFHS and stuff, um, is that everything counts in the passing game. You can't tell a guy to run a shallow cross and have him start out by the numbers. He'll never get there, okay? The field counts. The hashes count. They got to know pre-snap. Are they going to line at the top of the numbers? Are they on the numbers? They bottom of the – where do we line up where the ball's on the hash, okay? If I'm number two in a trips formation and the ball's on the hash, where do I line up, okay? If we're going to run – uh, we'll say we just run smash in the red zone, okay? And I'm the I'm the guy running the corner out. Well, do I run it to the front pylon? Do I run it to the back pylon? Okay, that, that's something that you have to clarify as a coach to your players, because everything in the passing game, everything, relates to time and space. Okay, it relates to grass. Okay. The offensive line has to understand we need them back, okay? This creates space. Space creates time. Never get beat inside, all right? Never get beat inside. The quarterback's got to understand, and this is I'm, I'm just a, a brutal on this. you got to have great feet. You've got to have great feet to play quarterback, and it drives me nuts. And I don't know what the new age, all this stuff, these quarterbacks are carrying this football so low Okay, and they're wanting to, you know, open the hips and they're throwing from right here. You know, uh, that's OK if you're six foot four. Now, if you're Johnny High School and you're five eleven, that ball's not. I think it's one of the reasons why you're seeing a lot of knockdowns at the line of scrimmage now uh, uh, with the with the ball. OK, um, so uh, everything relates to their footwork. OK. Um, with your coaches, especially guys that's not been around you for a long time, there's no discussion about the direction, okay? Uh, in, in my opinion, there's none of this where we can agree to disagree stuff. No, this is the direction we're going to go. We're going to throw the football, and we're going to have a constraint-based running game that is, is hey, we're, we're going to be able to run against a five- and six-man box. Well, RPO, RSO, a six-man box. We'll zone dive a five-man box. We'll trap a five-man box. But there's no direction on, hey, let's. can we do this? Can we add this? Can we? What is RSO? Run screen option. Okay, right on. So, like, throw the ball behind the 
Yeah, there'd be like a like first level back. zone read, like an old school zone read where you're running the bubble. Yeah. Um, um, so I just that used to drive me crazy. Uh, uh because and you know, you guys are both been our head coaches, you know. You you don't want to go and waste 45 minutes on a Saturday and a Sunday listening to somebody talk about something that you know you're not going to run. <laughs> Yes. All right. You know, and so there you get, you know, um, so, uh, you know, every, like I said, everything relates to time. The more time the quarterback has, the better his read, the better his read, the higher his completion percentage. You know, it, it, it and everything relates back to footwork. OK. Um, and I got this from Bill Parcells 25 years ago. Dumb players get you beat. If you play a dumb guy, that's on you. I mean, mm-hmm. and you know they, and like I said, they line up wrong. That costs you timeouts. Okay, uh, they bust routes. You know the oh my bad, coach, my bad. Yeah, I know it's your bad. You busted a route, and the quarterback uh, had to take one in the back because he had to hold on to the football uh, because it's your fault. And that happens a lot, especially in the shoot. You won't see it on the videos, but that happens a lot in the shoot early on when guys want to make their route breaks off the under coverage instead of pushing to the second level until they understand, hey, look, I'm not making my route break off this outside linebacker. I'm making my route break off the safety. I have to clear the outside linebacker, okay? And so those are just some random thoughts that I wanted to get put on that old PowerPoint. Um, and um, Another huge thing drives me crazy. When you catch the football, unless it's an in driving route, break out. Break out. If you catch a hitch, break out. Now, have your quarterback, and this is the other thing I always would talk about, a quarterback can make an average wide receiver a good wide receiver by having correct ball placement. You take something like the hitch. All right, so if I – Stomp and I'm what shoulder should the hitch be thrown on? It should not be thrown on the inside shoulder, okay? Because that's you're, you're going to bring in a pick six. The hitch should be thrown on the outside shoulder so I can catch it, tuck it, and turn outside and get down the sideline, okay? Uh, same thing on the go route in the run and shoot, you know, where one's off, two's on the seam, or three's at the flat. That's a very difficult route to teach about the, especially the, the, the horizontal depth of the go route. And that guy can get lit up if that quarterback puts it on his back shoulder instead of leading him just a little bit so he can get up the field, okay? And you hear, you know, uh, whether you run the slant, you want to straighten the guy up on the slant, you know, so he doesn't get rocked, you know. So ball placement is 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 paramount on, on that stuff. And, and it's stuff that you have to – uh, to do uh, last couple points and I'll shut up as a coach. We became really big in charting yards after the catch. Okay. And I was fanatical about it. chart the yards after the catch. That's going to tell you who your most guys that's got shake and stuff. All right. Get them the ball. If you could throw a five yard hitch or a five yard option route and the guy makes the 20 yard gain, that's some guy we need to be getting the football to, okay? And then lastly, in the age that we're in, when we when we adopted this and this became our mode of operation, we became data-driven in everything that we did because we wanted to measure it, all right? And that's dealing with our practice plans. That was dealing with the amount of plays that we carried into a game, uh, everything. Like when when the guys were were uh, in the weightlifting programs and and all that, you know, man, we we measured verticals and and broad jumps, and we wanted measurements on everything because that helps you with the parental stuff, you know. Because you know, honestly, you know, moms want calendars, dad want playing time, you know. And uh, look, you know, you're. Uh, Here's the data, dude. Your son's not doing it. It's not, you know, the other guy's better. 
and it's 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 does it's not personal it's not subjective it's uh the data makes it objective the data makes it makes it stick you know it's kind of like the baseball mentality look dude i can't play you you're batting 222 you know uh, your era is this high that's why they measure everything in baseball you know because you can't argue it you know and so um when we went to a data driven model which is really when you talk to me about the west coast that's what the West Coast is, okay? And, and I think more of that stuff than the triangle passing and all that. You know, it's it's have a systematic operation for everything that you do. Make every rep count, you know, because, you know, you don't want to be uh, running stuff in practice that you're not going to run on Friday night. That's a that's you're doing yourself a disservice, especially when you play really good football teams. What you thinking, Harry? Well, you, you know, I, I did a sneak peek on it on his on his PowerPoint or whatever. And one of the, the points you brought up, coach, was uh find somebody in your school that can throw. You know, if you're at a school and you don't know and yeah, so if if you pull up one, is there is there something you're looking for other than accuracy and, and arms? I mean, is there something that if a kid's throwing, what are the some details that you might give that that might fix a kid? Just you know, tweak it, just where I, where he's at. One of the things that I just inherently look for when I would just pop in during my planning period down in the PE classes and stuff, I wanted to see who could naturally throw it and have some zip on it. And, you know, they're all down in the PE, uh, you know, in the gym. And there's, foot, you know, guys, football, basketball. Who's the guy that's throwing the ball that's got some zip on it? You know, we can work on the other stuff, you know. But if you can naturally throw it, that's a that's a great starting point. Well, if he's got a zip but he's hitting like the top window in the gym. <laughs> um, that's a roll of the dice. Now, that's why you always want to try to have more than one. Yeah. Uh, and and there will come a time period, happened many times, Harry, there will come a time period where you get into like February or March, uh, and it's like, okay, dude, it's just not working out, you know. Um, uh, but, you, you you know, but that's where you, you know, you got to go through the whole set of drills, you know. You got to teach them how to correctly hold the football, the pressure on the ball. Uh, you know, you got to do the one knee drill, the two knee drill, all the I, we always call them in our, the, the Erickson drills after Dennis Erickson, because 25 years ago, I bought a tape on quarterback drills from Dennis Erickson. And he had all the, you know, uh, stuff that you kids pay money to go to camps. They're still doing, you know, and if you do all that and the kid still is not progressing like you would want him to do um you know you got to make a decision because if he's got legs and he can run well now you could still stay in that same four but emphasize the running game you know more mm -hmm. quarterback run type stuff until you can get him straightened out that was a, that was another question which you just answered it but like a, a resource if you know when you know, there's now there's gurus everywhere. Everybody wants to teach a quarterback how to throw. Well, yeah. to me, coach, just listening from what you do and the things that you do, you are a guru in my book. Now, you may not consider yourself, but so what is the resource you use when you're when, when you're looking at a quarterback and trying to teach him how to throw? Where, where do you get your information from? I go. I I traditionally. I went to Dennis, uh, Coach Erickson. I always listened to Mouse. Mouse always talked about the four eyes throwing, which were the two mm -hmm. eyes, the belly button, and the knee should all be to the same part. Uh, what I got from Coach Jones uh, was invaluable. Uh, June, you know, a lot of guys will like looking and staring at their football when they throw it, mm -hmm. but you can't do that, okay? Your eyes should never come off that target, just like a pitcher in baseball. And then finally, you know, being in Virginia, we were blessed. You know, all these years we went to Tex camp and UVA camp. And uh, we, we went down to Alabama and, and, and watched them. You got to get out. You got to get out and learn mm -hmm. 
what you're what you're talking about. Um, bought a, a bunch of stuff from Howard Schnellenberger when he was in his deal, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, when he was uh, finishing up at Miami and then getting into Louisville uh, about how to to throw the ball. Um, and it just takes reps. Right. It it just I mean you you know and um, used to be you couldn't help them. Now you can. You know, if you got an auxiliary gym or something to, to go to, man, mm -hmm. get get a couple guys in there and just throw, 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 and uh, have a program. You know, like we would work on uh, uh, footwork was first. Footwork was always first. Mm -hmm. Then then we went to, to throwing the football. And, um, yeah, that's what we did. Gotcha. Uh, Coach, one more thing. I, I, we'll, we'll get on with it. But So if, if you're going to start the run and shoot and you don't really know a whole lot, I mean, you, you, you're you kind of just starting it. Uh, wh where do you start? You start it in two by two and start everything against cover three. Mm -hmm. All right. Against one high safety. And um, you draw it 10,000 times for yourself until you can't screw it up. And um, you just do it and do it, man. I mean, it just it took a long time to 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 understand it because, um, you know, and that's what scares a lot of guys. Guys, and I've talked to a lot of coaches about guys like holding the card up and saying, "Okay, Billy, you got to post. Timmy, you got to do. Well, you can't do that and shoot, right? You, and you know, because I know you studied it, and you you know." Um, but that's also its explosiveness is they can't simulate what you're doing. They can't get their defense, the proper reps to stop a switch route. Heck, they can't stop it in the NFL. I mean, literally every week you see some team running switch. Yes. Sir. Every week mm -hmm. they cannot stop it. And um, I think the limitations to the shoot is um, – um, it's primarily a six-man protection scheme mm -hmm. until you have the 900 series, which gets the running back out. And so uh, if a team makes a decision to come after you and you don't have good slot receivers, it's going to be difficult. Whereas getting five out, now they got to have somebody blitz and engage and get, get a guy out and all that. But uh, – um, it, it led us to, to a lot of big wins over the years, um, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I hope I answered your question. No, you, Coach, you did. And, and, and so are you taking, like, one to two concepts and, and you you have all the answers? I mean, or – Oh, yeah. You, oh, is yeah. there, like, a, like, is there a quote, unquote, run and shoot starter kit where this is what you do? Everything is against cover three. Right. Everything starts against cover three, mm -hmm. and then you progress to two high. And in fact, all throughout the years, we had our quarterback when he was coming up to the line of scrimmage, and you could see him on film. And I mean, I can pull up film right now. You know, man, hey, we got one high, one high. Now that that is an indicator that tells the linemen, that tells the wide receivers, tells them a couple of different things. If he makes a one high call, that means we know we got a six man box. Mm -hmm. If everybody's covered down, okay. If he makes a too high call, okay, then that means we probably got a five man box, and this is where the 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 check system that we that we evolved into came about was because if you got a true five man box, where say we're going to play a four three team, and they're going to sit safeties at ten on the hashes, Sam and Will are out on two. Well then, then we're, we're then the quarterback's going to check to an inside run, okay? And it can be the inside zone, it can be a, a, the weak side trap, you know. And uh, you know, the, the, I mean, it, and it, people go, oh, "How do you do that on high school level? How hard is it to call? Hey, ace, ninety streak, kill it with thirty five mm -hmm. on go, you know? And then, you know, and see, keeps, hey, I got too high, I got too high. Then I do my box count, I got five guys in the box. Hey, kill, kill, kill. Boom. We're running 35. Okay. Now, after we did that, and teams kind of, if you stay in the same conference long enough, they kind of pick up on it. So you have to change kill to like Kentucky, 
Kansas. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then we also added alerts, okay? And so you had kills and you had alerts. Um, so a play call for us, real simple, uh, would be um, because principally in the shoot, you're looking at where that free safety is, okay? Mm -hmm. And Coach, do you mind if I draw on the board because it's easy for me to explain? That. Yeah. Well, Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> So the basis of the shoot, and I'll draw three by one here, okay? And we'll just line up in it so I won't motion across. And so it doesn't matter if you're in the pistol or offset, it really doesn't. We'll put him in the pistol. All right. So here's your hashes. Top of the numbers, top of the numbers. Okay. So, all right. So, let's say you come up, you come at the line of scrimmage, and let's say you're going to play, uh, I don't know, give me a defense, coach. Coach, <laughs> you want one high, you want three, two box, well, you know, that's. Uh, um, I'm, I'm trying to give you something where we would check. Uh, yeah, coach, just give me a. Uh, Three, two, but let's, let's go a bare front little five man box and okay. You know, apex your your outside linebackers. Okay. So he's there. All right. Uh, man to man coach. Or yes. that cover three, right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we'll go one high, something like that. Okay. So you got one, two, three, four, five, ten. Weak backer over here, coach. Yes. Okay. All right. So. If we well, remember now, quarterback's coming up. Hey, one high. So let's say the play call is uh, for us Rio 60 Z go. Okay. Now we got to give him an out. So we're going to kill it. And that's how we write it on the game script. We just put a, a little tag right there. So we're going to kill it with 61 X choice. Okay, alert 35. This is his alert right here. Because let's say he wants to come out and do that. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Yep. So if, all of I, if all I had was the choice call, well, that's bu you're busted. Right. Well, now he can't play the box and play out. But now he sees the free safety in the middle of the field. And we love that, to be totally honest with you. We really, because in our our belief, if this guy's a middle of the field safety, you're playing with 10 guys. You're playing with 10. Because Sid Gilman not, said the stage is set. Do what, Coach? Sid Gilman said the stage is set. Stage is set. Because we're not in going to foot. set. The show yeah, is coming. It's coming, dude. <laughs> Because we're going to hit you with go swap. We're going. We're not going to just fool with regular go, and let and let you hang and bang on this guy and get him off his uh, get him off his route. Okay. And remember now, you are who you are from your film. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to know from your film that you like playing a reduced bear. Right. So in our game script, this is going to be go swap. Okay, so all during that week, we're working the swap tag. Well, now the Z, he's coming in on the switch, and now the A back has got to get to the bottom of the numbers and turn it up. And see, remember me tell you about where this is where the field matters. Okay, mm -hmm. if this guy get, if this guy just gets to the top of the numbers, that corner can play divider, yeah. and he'll jump the, the seam or the outside. Now, if this guy gets to the bottom of the numbers, he can't play divider. Now, footwork, inside foot, outside foot. We're one, two. Now, I'm breaking three to five to the flat right there, and we're going to run it off that guy right there. Your Z has got a free release in five, up five. Now, I'm making my break off the free. So, if we're even, I'm taking it up. I'm leaving. If it's some type of roll, we'll take it to the post. 
If it's some type of weak roll, I'm taking it up. And this backer, you're, you're two on one in this backer. If this backer runs out, you might even get the hook right there. And let's take a second, talk protection here, okay? So for us, we had a couple of protection calls. This would be called a zero solid for us. Zeros, mic is one, two, three, will hot off four strong. So this is zero solid. Now that tells the super back that he got, he's got one. Center's got nose, guard's got the tackle. We're solid on the front side. One blocks one, two blocks two. Super back will go backer to weak side backer late. And so that's ghost swap. That would just be ghost swap uh, on that. Okay. And that's where the teaching part mm -hmm. would start. Okay. And now the progression off that would go to too high. And when we were in trips, this is the type of too high we would see. And this is why you have to have the alerts because they'll play, they'll do all kinds of stuff with this guy. Now he has crossed the midline pre snap, hadn't he? Mm -hmm, yes. Okay. And, and there's been plenty enough times where his chest and his face is staring right at number three totally disregarding the single guy, okay? Where they'll, they might even single up one and play two read off of two, I mean, excuse me, play two read off of three, and they'll solo this guy up, okay? Now, if he's crossed the midline, now we're going to check it to 61X choice. We're not even going to fool with it because they have one, Two, three, four to our three. We're done. So now we're going to check it. To, and the quarterback knows, and I promise you, I did it for 13 years. It's not that hard. We're looking for safeties, right? We identify safeties. Hey, I got too high. I got too high. And now he's crossed the midline, right? Yes. Immediately go to 61X choice. Immediately. Hey, kill, kill, kill. Now we're going to run the choice right off this guy. And now this is why you got to have the alert, like I said earlier. If they do anything with this guy, if they bring him up on the line of scrimmage, trap underneath him. Here, and here, here. And that actually the bear look would be hard to do it against. So it doesn't have to be trapped. I she's right. 35. Uh, it might be speed option that against that look whatever okay but what do you have here you got single you got one-on-one -on -one. yep and in the passing game that's what you want because one-on-one -on -one is one on none okay and he's crossed the midline because you, you you only throw against the looks that you want to throw against mm -hmm. okay and that's why I was I was saying like, you can't be afraid to run it but run it when it's to your advantage. Right. You know, and, and that's the whole point of it. Good stuff. Coach Taylor, this is why we need this guy on, man. It, this is gold. This is just gold. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. I appreciate that. Uh, and like I said, so that's where the game planning comes in. So, and it literally is like, okay, we're going to, every week, we're going to come up on the whiteboard, and we did it. 6 a.m. Sunday morning. There's there's no there's no clocks on Sunday. There's no clocks. And do we have it or not? You know, with what they've shown on film, what the data shows us, and you go right through your ready list, just like you guys do. Um, and you you uh you you grid it out, you figure it out. Love it. You got anything else on that first sheet you want to go over, Mark, or you went over all that? I think we went over all that. Yeah. You want to go to the next sheet? Yeah, that'd be great, Coach.
Do I do that, Coach? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, do I hit present? I think you just change this, change it to the next slide. And then whatever's showing on your screen, it'll pop up here. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Is that it? There you go. All right, so that's what I said. And I literally, don't be afraid to run the football, but only run it against the looks that you want. Okay? Now, this ties in with what we were talking about. You got to have a systematic way to get to the best play for each situation based on the leverage, the numbers, and the grass. Okay? Those are some different combinations that we use. We would go a run with a pass. Okay? So ask yourself this question. Why would we do that? Why would we have a run scripted with a pass? Because it got seven-man box. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay? We come out, let's say we, we're in trips, and we think we're going to get a six-man box so we can RPO. Well, they come out and blitz zero. So we got we to gotta have a way because we're not no huddle. We quit doing the no huddle stuff in 2013. Okay? So we got to have a way to get to a pass. Okay? Now, the only reason why we are checking is because it's blitz zero. So what do we want to do against blitz zero? Do we want to run a jailbreak screen? Do we want to run a slot rail? Do you, you get what I'm saying? Do we want to run mesh? You know what? So that's that you figure that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you have a pass and a run. So we come out, we got Rio 60 Z go. Oh, snap. They come out in three high and they're giving us a four man box. I got to have a way to take care of it. I got to have a way to, to dent that. All right. So we want to dent that. And once again, they if, if they're going to do it to us, if that coach of staff is any count, they've got they've done it before. Like this is how they play trips. So we'll have a book on them. And man, just this week we were going through some stuff. Uh man, there's so much stuff on YouTube where these pants are putting stuff up on YouTube. Uh, like if you wanted to get a book on somebody to heck with huddle and all that, just go to just just go to YouTube. And I mean, man, you could find so much stuff on who you're playing against. Uh, so that would be a pass to a run. Now, let's say you went a run with a run. All right. So now you're going to tag your alert is going to have a pass. So mm -hmm. say, for example, we come up, hey, we got ace trap package. All right. We're going to kill it with 90 switch. All right. So why are we killing trap package? Because seven man box. Mm -hmm. You see how it's all math? It's all numbers. Okay. So and, and, and if you if you look at it from that systematic if then scenario, you don't have to have a lot because you're always right. Okay. Um, then we have a pass with a pass. And that's just what I just showed you. Hey, we got Rio 60 Z go. Kill it with 61X choice. Oh, they pushed the cover two. They're soloing up the Z. They're playing two read off two and three. Uh, hey, we got one on one. Let's take advantage of it. Okay. So those are the scenarios that we would script our offense up with. And really, it's seasonal and it's game to game. Okay. Any trips pass that we have we're going to have the ability to kill that with choice. And we're also going to have the ability to check to the inside run. And once guys understand that, then we're good to go. Okay. And you could do that out of two by two. You could do it out of three by two. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, you know, so, so those are the scenarios. The next bullet point is what I think is really the question that we all have to ask ourselves. Is what kind of what kind of offense do we do we do we want to have? Do we want to be balanced? Very hard to do. Okay. Do we want to have a power approach? Okay. Hey, we're going to run power and we're going to run power kick and we're going to be run heavy and we're going to be. I'm seeing it on the high. I'm seeing a lot of twelve personnel, twenty two personnel, and we're just going to try to beat you physically. Okay. Are we going to be pass first? Multiple sets, play fast. All right. You know, what kind of 
And that is going to be uh, uh, determined a lot by your geographic location, okay, where you're at. Are you at a country school? Are you at uh, that has 160 kids? Or are you at a Division Six school in Virginia that has, I don't know, Troy, how much would a Division Six have? Above 2,000, 2,000 to 2,500. So, or 2,500. So you know what you would think in a school of 2,500, you could find some guys that can run. But if you're in a small single-A school in southwest West Virginia or southwest Virginia, uh, you don't know. You take the good with the bad. Uh, it's determined by your players, your facilities, and that's huge. Look, if you're going to make a commitment to throw the football – and, and Harry, it's just not going to affect you as much because you're in Florida, okay? But if you're going to be up here in January, in February, and in March, you've got to have someplace indoors where you can throw. Right. I mean, you just do. You're out there in January, and it's 17 degrees. Kids are freaking freezing to death. <laughs> you're freezing to death. You're miserable. The footballs are like throwing bricks at each other, okay? Uh, then I still talk about the level of the youth programs and, and your total number of players. Okay. Um, so I think all that determines that. The next point I think is huge as well, script everything. And I mean everything from your not on seven inside run uh, to your, your uh, past Skelly, uh, you, team, situ- everything. Everything has a script. And that, that requires a lot, man. That's a lot. But but the goal is to have zero wasted reps, okay? Uh, and this is where I believe, like Bill Walsh did, you know, don't, don't depend on yourself to be this great sideline genius to win games. It's a whole lot easier to make those calls during the week, especially when you've pared your game plan down and you say, okay, look, over the last year and a half, we've averaged one third and one in a game. What formation and play do we want to use on third and one? You know, and then you you got it, okay? Because the only thing that everybody's got equal is time. How you use it, okay? And I, I, I came to believe early on when I made the conversion from running the football to throwing the football that we have to throw every day. We have to throw every day. Mondays can no longer just be, hey, we're going to film, we're going to lift weights, we're going to walk through, we're going home. Them days are over. Monday is green zone. We got to be ready to rock. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're in full pads. As I got older, especially in, on the offensive side, we can go helmets and get our work done. You can run, be helmets and be past Skelly. You can be, you, you know, if you want to bang a little bit on, you know, your uh, a, a ten minute inside run period, being being helmets and shoulder pads, okay. Uh, but everything is scripted, okay. And I just came to this point, like, and like our coaches and everybody bought into it. Everything that we do, it is reps, 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 reps. If you need to talk to a guy, do it as quickly as you can. Don't stop the drill. Don't stop, especially the team periods. And I'll talk about that in a second. But you have to get more reps during the week than your opponent. And I will tell you somebody in the state of Virginia who was, uh, in my opinion, and I certainly don't know everybody, but the guys that I come into contact with was uh, Coach Garamo, who was at Ari Lee. And now he's at um, Prince George. Prince George. He was always ahead on like the Go Army app and they and and the virtual reality. If I was to get back into coaching tomorrow, I would have a fundraiser, and I would do whatever I could do to get one of these virtual reality things. Reps VR. One Reps of our sponsors. VR. Okay. Reps virtual reality. It's all about getting reps. There it Bill is. Best, Bill Best uses it. UCLA uses it. Bill Best, offensive line coach, Colorado State. 
And I have my guys come in. I have my quarterbacks come in early, get them, get the mental reps, get come in at lunch and do it. Okay. Uh, I mean, you talk about your January, your fit. Imagine how many mental reps a kid could see 90 switch 10,000 times. Hmm. Now, what's that going to do to your completion rate? It's going to go up. You know, so that's a that's a worthy investment, and in, in, in my in my opinion, you know, uh, that's something that's a game changer. Um, and so, you know, it all comes down. I guess what we're saying is is that the team that makes the fewest mistakes wins. Okay, it's like a triple option team, and this is one of the reasons why I got out of the veer. How many times if you if you've ever coached the option? Oh man, if we'd have just pulled it. We got it, okay? Well, you didn't pull it, and you dive back, got tackled, and you're in second and nine, okay? And, and so you, you watch the film, and you go, God, if we'd have just pitched it on the speed option instead of turning it up. Well, you didn't pitch it, and now you're punting. And so the run and shoot specifically is the same way. you got to give these guys who are running the seam reads they have to be able to see that 10,000 times. Yeah, Jay, J- Jason Butler that left the message, I have a subscription to Reps Virtual Reality. If you have an Oculus, you know, that meta thing or whatever, yeah. just hit me up, man. And they have like a, a beginner quarterback read thing where, I mean, they have it now, Coach. They put the – um. They put the GoPro on the quarterback. They put the GoPro on the offensive lineman, and they actually Dude, get reps. That's, that's where it's going. And, hey, if you're not doing it, you're behind. If you're going to make a living throwing the football, and I, I'm telling you, and if I was running the triple, I'd put it on my quarterback running the triple because you know what you'd find out? You'd find out if he was looking at the handoff or looking at the key. You know, so any time, and that's the biggest thing that, that you got to ask yourself. And and God, I told my staff this for years: Are you going to ask your quarterback to win the game or not? Now, if you're not going to ask your quarterback to win the game, just run the single wing, just direct snap. Uh-huh. But if you are, if you are going to ask him to win the game, then you got to give him the tools. You got to give him the tools at the line of scrimmage. You know, assuming he has the physical capabilities and the mental capabilities to. Handle. If he can do that, then you got to give him the tools to handle handle what you're going to do. And so uh, I had bought a book from a guy who's got a lot of stuff out named Rich Hargett about um, situational practices, and I absolutely fell in love with it, okay, uh, because you simulate everything. Like coaches are on the sideline. How many times have you ran a pass skelly drill or team offense, and you got all your defensive coaches about 15 yards uh, back in the middle of the field, okay? Cover um, 22. There's 22 guys back there. Cover 22. Cover 22. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, now get their butt off the field. Yeah. Get their – and now think about everything, especially from an offense. Man, the quarterback is learning leadership. He's got to get them in and out of the huddle, okay? Especially if you huddle. And if you know how that's a whole different thing, all right? Uh, you could practice your sideline, okay? Uh, there's so many things that you can get to practice on a daily basis by doing that, okay? Uh, so it's get chain gangs with team peers. Well, who's on the chain gangs? Get the two 10th graders who can, can't walk and chew gum at the same time, you know? Hey, you want to help us out? You're running the chains today, dude. Did it many times in, in, in our last season, Okay? Um, calls from the sideline, gets coaches off the field. Uh, uh, we never could get a clock, but I've saw on like uh, BSN, you can get the clocks, okay, uh, for the plays. Uh, and the whole point, as Coach Hargett was saying, is to make it as much about the real game as possible. And you film it and, and from the end zone, and you, you can see what you're doing. You know, you put it up on huddle. You put your responses to it, and off you go. And so the bottom line is it comes back to how well are you organizing everything, you know. Uh, 
special teams, defense, offense, and uh, and I just said make the game as much about data collection and analyzing as you can. Make we we always tried to make it as much about mathematical as possible. Make it measurable, okay? Because it shows us, um, you know, what we can get better at. You know, um, you know, it's like. Uh, for us in the four and five wide offense we were running, goal line offense wasn't that big of a deal. We were in goal line like one time a game. And then you go, well, you got, why wouldn't you in goal line? Well, because we were throwing switch from the 30. We were throwing, you know, you, you, you're running Houston over from the 25, you know, and, and, and all that. So uh, now if you didn't know that, and you're saying, man, we got to have a goal line period, knuckles in the ground, and I got eight plays in goal line, you're wasting time because you ain't in it. You know, here was the, the one that uh, that always stuck out with me. How many times are you in second and one? Now, this is us, so I want to tell you the answer. If you're in second and one in the open field, which we identified as 25 or 20 to 20, we were in second and one, one time a game. So why would I have five plays scripted? Now, the bigger question is, is what do you want to do on that second one? That's a shot play for us. That's a shot play. And, and now you do that a couple of games, and then if that defensive coordinator is worth his salt, all right, here comes the shot play, here comes the shot play, and then now you can do something else off of that, okay? Um, so, you know, it, you can't be organized enough, especially on your sideline call sheet. And um, there shouldn't be anything on that sideline call sheet that you didn't go through on the week. And, and, and one of the things that when I was younger – really used to bother me was people would say the hay's in the barn and I go, well, no, the hay's just starting. It's Friday night. Let me tell you something. If you practice situational football and you know, and you've done work your however many hours and stuff, that hay is kind of in the barn because how good are they going to be on defense? And this is what I always would tell our guys. How good are they going to be on defense? If they come out in some defense they've never ran before, they got kids in special ed too. They got kids that ain't smart. They got kids that's going to miss a line. And you know what? That's why you run the shoot. Because all you all they got to identify is it, is it something, uh, no high, one high or two high. You know? And so that, that was always our belief on it. You know? And um, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was taking a picture of y'all, man. I'm gonna post it <laughs> on Twitter. I got this, I got this big screen TV, so I'll be looking up there and looking down here and all this fancy stuff. You got it all, coach. I'm the low man on the totem pole, man. <laughs> yeah, but you got technology, man. I, I've never seen a, a, a totem pole with that much technology. You I'm telling you. I'm you sitting here like, uh, show me how to up. do this, and uh, what do I hit? Yeah, I'm I'm like the whiteboard, you know. <laughs> that's that's good. The stuff. whiteboard is the best. Love it. Uh, love hey, coach, are, are your um, your RPOs are they or do the, did they take place or or supplement your alerts and kills? Did you just go to a RPO? We went to complete RPOs. We went to complete RP total RPOs. Uh, and our, our our run game would always have an RPO atta attached to it, mm -hmm. always. No. And RPOs, we 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 looked at RPOs as a tool. Our RPOs would change week to week, okay. In, in our in our ready list, you know, we would have RPOs versus an apex linebacker, okay. Um, you know, if you got one linebacker out and you're facing a one high safety. Uh, we, you know, we had a certain number of RPOs that we really, really like to do. Uh, 
the best the best one that, for my money was one that we called Dog. Okay, and and I'll draw it up for you now. And and Dog Dog is legit. Uh, can you see that, Coach? Yes. Okay. So Dog was uh, a three by one. So we started seeing in the Shenandoah Valley, we started seeing this look right here a lot. Okay. Quarters like that. Mm -hmm. So whatever run you wanted to tag, you know, you could run power, uh, you could run zone, you could trap it, whatever you wanted to tag. We'll just put the we'll just run the basic zone. All right. So our play call like here. So for us, this would be a real brown because the color tells the back where to go. So if we called real blue, the back would be to the left. If we just called Rio, he was in the pistol. Okay. And if we wanted to empty it, we had, you know, we could put him here, put him here, put him out. So it was, it was a color tag. So we'd go real brown, 13 dog. So that's a run, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we got to kill it with? We're going to kill it with a pass, right? Okay. So ideally, we'll kill it with a pass. So we go real brown, 13 dog. We're going to kill it with the pass, and we're going to kill it with 60 Houston scissors. Now, this is a time that we don't need an alert because you're already going to run the football. There's nothing to alert to. So, like, if you get a five-man box, just stay in 13, dog. Does that, does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Okay, there's no need to alert because you're already in a run. Okay, so so we're going to RPO off that guy right there. Okay, that's going to be the trigger guy. So we're 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 here, we're sifting, we're coming flat, left handed up to the wheel. We got a hat for a hat. The X is going to drive on the safety. All right, he's a little deeper, right there. So he's coming across. Here's the butt. We're crossing. You know, we, we can do the three. We can bend it, bang it. We're going to keep – We're gonna. that's going to be the run pass key. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the read key right there. One is on an inside release post. He will get fronted and back by the corner and the safety. The corner will go to closed position. The safety, because nobody's – Two and three are not going to get in his no-fly zone, okay? So he'll pick the post up late and undercut it. I'm on an inside foot up, outside foot out, inside foot up. One, two, three, four. I'm stomping on four, and I'm driving to the sideline. One, two, three, four, and I'm reading the nickel. If the nickel is out, I just shuffle right there, Okay. Because if the mic triggers, the ball will go there. They're busted. And that's a play you can run over and over and over again. Okay? Now, I retired, so I never got into this. I was, I was working and did a lot of research on third-level glances. Because this is what a lot of the college with Lane Kiff and a lot of college guys do. Because all these four two five guys, what do they like doing with that free safety against trips? They like bringing him down in this hang area, right? So now you run thirteen, and we were going to call it flip. Thirteen flip. Now you got the post coming behind it. So if this safety's down, this safety's down. There's your read right there. Mm -hmm. And that's not hard. You remember in the in the in the the sheet I was talking about throwing and running to the grass. You're going to the grass. 
Okay. Now, so what's the only what's the way they stop dog? A way. Well, now what's your box count? Yeah, five. Run it. <laughs> now you got it, and they're busted. And so we we ran we we ran teams out of four two fives. Okay, and yeah, go ahead, coach. You like he's gonna say something? No, you're good. You oh, okay? You're good. Okay. Uh, and so so that would be one another good one that we always ran. Just out out. Like something off this. Once again, we're going to trigger off that mic. Okay. We're going to send this guy one, two, three. He's going to pick the nickel. I'm going to stutter step and I'm coming underneath right there. So if the mic triggers on the inside zone, bam, there's nobody there. Did y'all fool with bunches and stuff like that? If y'all got, you know, that's a whole week. I love bunches, mm -hmm. but that's a whole different world, dude. It's, it is, and, and it takes reps. And it takes reps. And if you're doing that, it, it's it's really you know, it, it's it's hard to do what, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But I loved it. Yeah. I mean, I I did. But I think if you're gonna live in bunch world, you gotta live in bunch world. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I love the stuff Tennessee does. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the really out, but you got to have blazing wide receivers mm -hmm. and you got to have a strong arm quarterback because that ball is in the air a long time, especially yeah. on the deep routes and stuff. You know, did you so, always have guys that could run up, you know, th that were faster than your opponents, or did you have no you have some letters? We had very, there were times, that, and that's why I loved it, is because it always gave us a chance to compete. When we lost games uh, from an offensive point of view, mm -hmm. it's because we couldn't block the front four. Gotcha. A, a, a team, if they could beat us with the edge guys and not bring pressure mm -hmm. and sit and cover down, then – then now, if we could pass protect, okay, and, and uh, I always believe what Coach Schnellenberger said, get run over slowly. You know, if Speed we – Speed bump. You know, if we could pass protect, uh, we we could we could find a way to move the football. Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, that's just what we did with it. Yeah, and so RPOs became huge for us. And like I said, it's a tool because let's say I didn't want to run thirteen. Let's say I wanted to run and trap this five technique. Mm -hmm. Okay, well now you can do it. Still read the mind. Let's say I wanted to back block on the two, come up on the mic, or come up on the wheel. All right. So you, it's just pairing the runs with the RPOs. Yeah. And, you know, and once again, you would give him a tag because if they come out and man, you know, and this was a big internal discussion we had. You know, we're not going to sit out there and do all this and, you know, run rub routes and try to run it. If you get a seven man box, just kill it. Because mm -hmm. we don't, we, we're not going to run the football against a seven man box. And we're going to RPO and RSO a six man box. And we're going to base, just base zone dive uh, a five man box and get them out of it. I mean, and that's what we did. Harry, anything else you could think to ask Coach while we still got him on? Coach, I, I mean, it is what December eighth. Christmas came on December eighth this year. I'm telling you, <laughs> this is. I don't thank you. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm just telling you, I, I, this this fired me up. You know, you you get that uh, little after the season lull, man. That this is what I needed. Uh, you know, that's like you know, and I know it's early, but like go back and and. Um, Look at your look at the number of plays that you ran. Mm -hmm. Like you ought to find out, like how you know how many plays did we have in the red zone? How many? Because that sets the scope and sequence of your offense. And what we always found out, even when we knew what we were doing, is we were carrying way too much offense than we actually needed. We were carrying way because your ones and your twos have got to get the reps. And we were just having a discussion in here the other day after school. 
you know, um, you know, like your past skeleton periods. How long are your past skeleton periods? Could be eight to ten minutes tops. Eight to ten minutes. So one rep per one minute. Okay. Yeah. Unless you're no huddle, and that's old. Well, yeah, it's, yeah, we're trying to get so that pass offense, especially if you're going to get twos reps. Mm -hmm. You you're not going to be able to carry a whole lot. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, but what you can carry, you know that you will have practiced it. Yeah. You oh know, yeah. That's, that's the Keep biggest thing. At, keep it simple, because yeah. boy, they'll screw it up. You know, if they can't screw it up, they will. Absolutely. You know? And and so like we had to steal reps in pre-practice. Mm -hmm. Pre-practice was huge for us. Seam read drill every day. Seam read. Everybody's got to learn seam read drill. Now not everybody learned how to run choice. Okay, um, some guys can never pick it up. Some guys will make the break at five instead of seven. Some guys can't you know read the hips and they can't process information that fast. Um, but that goes back to throwing the football. Every day, mm -hmm. you have to throw the football. Every I, I, I said, I want to throw every day. I want to block every day. I want to tackle every day. And that doesn't necessarily mean tackling people. Like we had to tackle in wheels and all that stuff. Um, so that's what we did, you know. Uh, and and you can do it, especially in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, there's no reason why you can't throw the football successfully. Now, yeah. coach, it's it's like. Uh, high 50s, low 60s, and I'm in a hoodie, and all my kids are bundled up like we are, you know, seeing a, you know, some kind of climate change that they've never seen before. So, yeah, I, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but you're yeah, like, coach, I mean, you need to show you an example of like a zone overload. Uh, I could show you a zone overload. I can show you yeah. whatever you control. Um, how do you get your next job, coach? I don't know. Uh, I'm still still decide <laughs> if I want to deal with all the other stuff that comes. This is the good stuff. I just want to decide if I want to get back and have to deal with everything else. You know, um, I, I think certainly some, somebody would hire you as an offensive coordinator, coach, because I mean that would, <laughs> to me that would be the best gig because let them all worry about the fundraisers and yeah, you know, that, that, there's a you know, um, but you know. But I can't emphasize enough about like the parameters on the offense. Like that was just a game changer. Yeah. Like when we bought in, on, bought into that, and we really studied, like, wow. I mean, like, because guys would say, like, coach, this is so much better. It's so easier, you know, and they'd be like, that's it, you know, and like, um, uh, uh, because it, it gave you a direction, you know. The majority of the high school football game, statistically, is in the green zone from 20 to 20. Uh, high school, most high schools will have one one drive of backed up. They will have one uh, uh, a series in the minus six to minus 19, and the, you'll have over 40 plays in the 20 to 20. Yeah, and, uh, you know, so that's, if I have any advice at all, it would be to go back and look through all your cut-ups, examine your field zones, and then that will tell you the amount of plays that you'll have to have, and that will set the scope and sequence of your offense. And then you determine your pass-run ratio, uh, you know, and and uh, that will let you know, like, if you, you know, if, um, uh, let's say, okay, we'll use us, for example. All right, green zone in 2021. We had 21 first down calls that we averaged. 21. Okay. What run pass ratio would you have with what you're doing in terms of that? So if you, if I give you 21 calls and I said, Coach Lee's, what's our run pass ratio at West Florida High? Mine. <laughs> We're probably throwing it uh, 16, 17 times out of 21. Okay. So of that 16, 17. How many are going to be screens? Yeah, screens, quick game. Quick game. Do you, how many are going to be dropbacks? Yeah. Okay. And and so then that – you see how it, it, it yes. kind of – yes. and I'm sure you're probably already doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so it gives you a direction. And, um, yeah, so that's what we 
we just bought into that hook, line, and sinker, man. And um, we had an issue with the team that we couldn't beat. And then we went, and I mean, we really studied and researched and uh, uh, found the overload stuff, you know, about getting four and five guys in one area post-snap. Because uh, if you only get three, they can cover you down. Mm-hmm. Start getting four and five, boy, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard, you know, for them for them to to do that. And so, that's Coach, why did you go to huddle and back up from no huddle stuff? Because when I was at Eastern Montgomery, where we played for a state title and went to the playoffs four straight years, uh, you would think it would increase your numbers, mm-hmm. but our numbers start doing this. Because the amount and, and and our thought process at Eastmont was if the defense has time enough to do anything other than line up, we're too slow. I mean, it was one play every eight seconds, dude. And I mean, you know, we're signaling and we're gone. You know, we got to the point where we had uh, one signal was two plays. Okay. <laughs> so if, if we signaled, um, we did Army. We did Army. That was zone right, zone left. You know, it's on the ground. Uh, we had Air Force. So if we just signaled into formation and went Air Force, all right, that was 60 Z go. Next play was 61 X choice. Okay. And so that stuff like that helps you get, get speed. Okay. And, and, but you have to train for that, especially at a smaller school. And I don't know how big West Florida is because you got guys going both ways. Right. Plus special teams. And you have to be innovative in your practices because the guys will get dead legs about halfway through the season. Yeah. And, and and it just gets to the point where like you're down to the gristle, man. It's bone on bone. You know, it's let's huddle up, but find a way to keep the ability to get in the best play. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 how we evolved to what we did. And I like now better, I feel better than what we're doing now. Than, than doing the no huddle stuff um, because on the no huddle stuff, all of the pressure is on you on the sideline, mm-hmm. all of it. And sometimes you get really easy looks, but sometimes you get really hard looks where you're like, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, you know, now it's like, okay, if the safety's here, we're going to run this. We can kill it. And if we get a light box, we can alert to that. And so theoretically, if talent is equal, we, you know, we had a nine win season. We went undefeated. We went to the playoffs five years in a row. And uh, I think that speaks for itself for what we did. Well, you put uh, your, your kids in the best position by giving them, you're, you're, you're running to numbers or leverage. And, and uh, that's it. That you said it better, you know. Uh, Numbers and leverages. And the only thing that we ask for them to do is play as hard as they can and to be smart because dumb guys get you beat. You cannot be dumb, you know. <laughs> and, you know, uh, at least for us. And like I said, that way it's not for everybody. And, um, you know, and when we lost games, it was just games where we just got out physical, you know. Um, you know, like, like you know, uh, I know, I don't know if you know the area coach, you know, we you know, we'd be nine and two or nine and one or whatever. And then we'd get rewarded with having to go and play a Seminole school. Mm-hmm. We, how do you match up with that? You you, you know, especially what we what we got. Right. And we would play with them for a half, and then their talent and their speed would take over and they'd get us, you know. But what we didn't lose too much when talent was equal, you know. Um, and so um you know, I, I was really proud of the kids that we had and the, the job that we were, our staff was able to do. And uh, um, I, I think it's a winning system, you know. And uh, that's, you know, if I ever got back into it, that's what we would do because the only thing I would do a little different is I would actually have less run and shoot, as I was telling Troy earlier, uh, before you come on, and more West. Met, you know, more of the West Coast stuff because the three high stuff, if they're going to sit 
three safeties back, it screws with the seam reader mm -hmm. because they could play two Tampa and that safety breaks for the uh, uh, over the top. Well, that tells the seamer to break to the post, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now he's breaking to a middle of the field safety. And so we're starting to see that leak in to schools in here in Virginia. Uh, I'm sure you see it a lot down there. You know, the three, the three, and it's not like the old three, three that we used to see back in 05 and 06, where they're going to play three and the dogs are out and they're going to sit in one high. Mm -hmm. uh, it's their play. Those dogs are three. It's three safeties, man. Yeah. You know, and that led us in 2019 when we started seeing it release the back. And we actually come up with the saying, you know, you're never wrong with three to the flat. You are never wrong with three to the flat. Dump it to the back. Dump it to the back. Get your five. Dump it to the back. Get your five. Sooner or later, that dog's going to come down. Now, when he comes down, now that opens up the seam read behind him. You know, you're never wrong with three to the flat. And, and, and you know, that, that, is, that in and of itself is the essence of the West Coast offense. That's the cheat code. That's if, the you cheat can ever, code. if you can ever get your daggum quarterback to get off the off the sexy throws down the field and hit find your back or your check down, and that guy's going to make you look good because you know you've inflated the defense. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we had a, we had a drill for that that we would do. Uh, we called it Walsh drill, where it was all right. I'm looking off one. I'm looking off two, and I'm going to hit three in the flat. And you just program it. You programming to hit you up and to make that throw, all right. Uh, and and I believe that really helped us a lot, um, you know, because somebody's going to, you know, in, in everything that you're doing, every route concept you have, you're trying to get two guys to play one wide receiver, mm -hmm. whether it's a corner and a safety, fronting and backing a post route, so you can so number two can run the sail behind him, okay. And so whatever route company, you're always trying to get two guys to play one, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you can add that running back into the flat, and I'm seeing teams in college do it a lot now where they're running mesh rail, mm -hmm. where the guy's going in mesh, well, the willy is running with the running back. All right, well, he's now vacated that area. So now you've got the mesh guy from this side, from this side coming across. And dude, there's nobody there. Yeah. So they're going rail to that void area, and it's wide open, you know. And so uh, it's just about once again find, being able to find that grass, and like you said, having a quarterback that has the patience, and that comes with reps. Yeah. That I'm just convinced of that. Well, coach, thank you for coming on. I oh, can't wait. I can't wait till you come back on. Um, what are you thinking about next, Coach? What are you thinking? Because Co Harry said you need to come on once a week. What do you think you want to talk about next? <laughs> coach, I don't know if your wife's gonna like that, Coach. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you you, you text just hit me up, and and it doesn't always have to be about passing. You know. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, what, what, I mean, whatever you want to, you know, we talk defense. Um, yeah, anybody in the, that's watching this video, put it down in the comments. Coach will come back on. Um, Coach, how, how can people get in contact with you? What's your email address or? Uh, yeah, it's uh, or Mark. Twitter or what? Yeah, it's uh, uh, just I check my, my school email more than anything. It's Mark underscore Poston, P-O-S-T-O-N, at. Rockbridge, it's one word, dot K12, dot VA, dot US. Get ready to put it up on the screen, Coach. All right, Coach. See, That's it. That Mark underscore. Oh, uh, not, it's not position. Well, it's, it's yeah, not. not position, and you need to get K12 in there, too. K twelve, yeah. Dot K twelve. Dot V A. Dot U S. I'll get it right, Coach. Mark underscore Austin at Rockbridge. Dot V A. Dot U S. Dot K twelve. Yep. Hey Harry, do you run a lot of RPOs down there? 
Coach, we uh, we ran more option this this past year. We've run it in the in the past, um, and I was running my quarterback more. But what we're transitioning to because our quarterbacks aren't quite as mobile. Um, we're, we're looking at RPOs and and uh, you know in base and base left in our passing game. Let me, before we leave, let me give you one good two by two one here, okay? Coach Taylor, this is the best. <laughs> hey man. Every time I do one, you can come on. You be my co-host. I, look, I'm just telling you. I don't. I don't want to get anybody divorced. All right, because <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm not a good influence. Okay. Well, my wife, when Billy I told Mills. her that I was, I was talking with uh, Coach Poston Day. She knew exactly oh, who I was no. talking about because he's on my TV. Like I've watched all his little videos he's put out. Oh, wow. What's crazy is a. A lot of those were during COVID, during the lockdown. Yeah. Did you see some of them homemade haircuts? Oh, it's oh, great. Oh. Coach, coach I'm, yeah, it's great. I was the only person that didn't watch any football videos over COVID. Man. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, <laughs> so once again, being Shendo Valley for men front. Now, we do, do you want a true mic or do you want to go split with it? Because it, it hold, these hold up to anything. Yeah, wh whatever you want to draw, Coach. It, okay, it, it, I'll, okay. Four, two. All right. All right, so go split, Coach. Is that what you said? Yeah, like Virginia Tech used to do. Okay. Four, two, nickel. Four, two, nickel. Nickel's out. Strong safety side. They're going to play two. Three. All right, so once again now, there's two things that we can do here, Okay. I'll show you the base. So let's say we're going to take our same thing. We're going to go Ace Brown, 13. Now we got to add the uh, RPO tag. We'll go 13 HBO. Okay. So that's the base run. That's the run. Now, if they give us a seven man box, we got to kill it. So let's kill it with a shot. So we'll go 90 switch, Z read. Okay. That, that's that's, the, that's the, the play call. All right, so the quarterback comes up. He he's calling it too high. Remember, we're not we can't control what the coverage is. Okay, it could roll to anything, and I know their leverages are different, but we told him to just read it. Hey, I got two safeties. So now he's coming down now to his trigger, and at first that's the trigger. Okay, right there. Okay, so we're still going to block. So he tells the line. And you're hearing Dak Prescott say it now. You know, here we go. Here we go. That's just another way of saying, hey, we're good. We're good. Okay. So he's telling them we're good. We're good. We're good. So one blocks one, two blocks two. We're skipping up to the wheel. We're blocking. We're going to trigger off that guy. Okay. Now, 13, HBO. Outside release. We're looking for a hole shot right there. Okay, now we are on a three-step, one, excuse me, four-step, one, two, no, my bad, three, coach, three-step rolled out, okay, right there. And on this side, this would be his pre-snap, okay? This would be his pre-snap gift. You have to do this in two-by-two. For this very defense. Right there. So where should the ball go? Quarterback will know pre-snap. If we've done our job during the week and we've coached him up on leverage and grass, where should the ball go? Well, I'm thinking you're pre-snap. You're 100% you're right. He's gonna he's gonna tell the tailback. Got this off Stu Rogers, rest his soul. Hey, poison, poison. So now I'm still coming across like it's 13. I catch the football, crow hop one, and we're gonna read it off the corner. Mm -hmm. This guy cannot make that play. Right. That's not that hard. You just got practice it. Now you hit that, and you hit that, and you hit that. Yep. Now you got the HBO because now he's apex. And now you run the HBO off that guy. 
See how it's an if then? Everything we do is an if then. And then what's the get out of jail free card? If they want to play seven, hey, kill it, kill it, kill it. We got 90 switch Z read. Okay. Well, these guys are running the switch route. These guys are running the read route. Versus a seven. So in two by two, you got to have your gifts. Good stuff. I told you that's a good one. That's a goodie. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Coach, for coming on. I'm up. I'm gonna end the stream right now. Then we'll sit and talk for a little bit. Then y'all can go home to your wives. Sounds <laughs> good, Coach. <laughs>